Hi, I'm His Lordship, the founder of the Wilderness Guardians. Welcome to episode 3 of Castle Critic. This is the series in which we look at all of RuneScape's castles and determine which among them is the most defensible and could best survive an oncoming attack. Today we're looking at the White Knight's Castle in Falador. For those of you who have seen previous Castle Critic videos, you're very welcome to check the timestamp in the video description and skip forward to the analysis. But to my first time viewers, I'd just like to introduce myself as an amateur in the study of castle design. I don't know everything there is to know about it, and in fact entire careers have been dedicated to that. But as an amateur, I think I'm fairly well equipped to give some insight for three reasons. One, I've visited several dozen castles in my life, many of them in the UK. Those are the castles which influenced Jagex, so that's particularly important. Two, I've read fairly widely on the subject. I own one or two books on castle design and I've done my research online as well. Three, I am a huge fan of Shadowversity. Shadowversity is the YouTube channel that best goes into the details of castle defenses, both in reality and in fiction. Before we proceed with RuneScape's castles, I do need to draw your attention to four assumptions that we have to make when we're talking about these castles. Assumption number one, these castles were built to defend against human attackers or humanoid attackers. You can't factor in magical creatures because then castle design completely changes and they wouldn't be built in that manner. Two, you have to assume that teleportation doesn't work under siege conditions. We as humans are privileged, we can teleport anywhere, but most NPCs don't have that ability. Again, if you could teleport, you wouldn't bother building castles to defend yourself. You'd just get the hell out of there. Three, we have to assume that magic spells don't do a great job against castle walls. So if uh, wizards could come in and blow holes in the walls, there wouldn't be walls built in the first place. Our fourth assumption is that the cannons in the game are a new emerging technology that don't yet have the power to blast massive holes through walls. Now, although that became increasingly common through the Middle Ages, and that's actually what led to the decline of castles, the early cannons didn't have that kind of power. Secondly, we also look at dwarf cannons, which rotate, which means that they don't have the same structural integrity. They're clearly designed for creatures, monsters, and not castle defences. The White Knight's Castle in Falador is the third oldest castle in RuneScape, after Lumbridge Castle and Varrock Palace. It was released on April 6, 2001, when RuneScape was just three months old. Although Falador has been extensively reworked over the years, you might be quite surprised to find out that the castle is actually very similar to its original RuneScape classic incarnation. Now, as many viewers have already guessed, the White Knight's Castle fares a whole lot better than Varrock Palace and Lumbridge Castle, but while the designers got a lot right, there's also a fair few problems. Let's start with location. It's pretty clear that the White Knights chose this location strategically to fend off the Black Knights to the north and to the west. That's probably why the castle isn't built on Ice Mountain or by the sea, which both offer natural defenses. Falador is on flat land and therefore can easily be approached from all sides. But that's okay because the White Knights have compensated for this by building a water-filled moat. While this doesn't offer the same degree of advantage as an actual body of water or a hill, it's the next best thing. We'll talk more about the moat later. Firstly, we'll need to start from the outside and work our way in. The first defense of the city is the city wall, and I'm incredibly relieved to see that the walls of Falador have gates, unlike Varrock. Wait a second, the southern city entrance. Oh no. Now I get what you're probably thinking, it's more critical for the northern entrance to be gated because that's the side facing the city's major enemy, but let's not forget how small Falador really is, especially compared to Varrock. It would be far easier for the Black Knights to march around the city via Barbarian Village and charge from the south. Now obviously this will expose them to a lot of arrow and spell fire from the walls, and that's a lot of ground to cover. Then they have to snake their way through the city once they're in, but in my submission, that long path is still easier than attacking the gate. We haven't finished looking at the city wall yet. There are a few more curiosities to tease out. 
If you watched my last video about Varrox city walls, you may recall I took issue with their shortness. The same is true here. These walls are a little more than twice human height, which means if standing on the shoulders of a fellow attacker, you could lift your arms and probably pull yourself over. A good wall really does need to be about three times human height. Outer walls of castles are called curtain walls, and they really do drape around the perimeter. These walls here have crenellations, which are battlements designed to let archers and mages hide behind and peer around to fire down on attackers. But they only work if they come up to head height, which these definitely don't. I'd say Falador's crenellations come up to about chest height, which is better than nothing I suppose, but still a bit of a waste. The wall thickness isn't too bad. I'd say as a generous estimate they'd be about 2 meters thick. You probably wouldn't want to go any thinner than that because it makes it too easy for siege weapons like trebuchets to tear them down. Which is why I'm baffled by the eastern half of the city walls. There's a rampart on top, but the underside is hollow. The wall itself is only perhaps a foot thick, which is so stupidly thin that even a battering ram could bust it. But again, we have to give Jagex the benefit of the doubt here because the scale of buildings in RuneScape can't exactly map accurately into the real world. So I guess I can move past that. It just doesn't make sense to me though that half the city would have a proper wall and the other half would have just a shell of a wall. Now, where the wall is completely full, it isn't too badly constructed. If I were to be fussy, I would have loved to see towers on the wall where defenders could flank the enemy and fire down at attackers from the sides. I would especially have loved towers by the gate. The gate is the most vulnerable part of a wall, which is why gatehouses exist. None of that matters though, because to the west, there is a massive hole in the wall. This is incredibly stupid, and the only way I can forgive it is if it was made recently by attacking black knights, and the white knights haven't yet come round to fixing it. Even still, they should have put up some temporary barricades. I can't actually believe that's true though, because as you can see there is a pathway leading to the crumbling wall, meaning that it's had a lot of foot traffic and has therefore been there a while. Because of this, the entire city wall is made redundant. Obviously this is a critical travel route for players, but in my eyes, unforgivable. Let's look at the castle itself. I mentioned the moat earlier. This is a superb defense because it really makes it difficult for ladders, towers and rams to approach the wall. The tiny bit of land between the moat and the castle is elevated sufficiently that not much can really happen on it. There is a chance that miners could decay the wall's foundations, but they'd have a really hard time doing that without getting flooded. So all in all, I'm generally pleased with the moat. The only real criticism I have is the lack of drawbridge. For me, that's a wasted opportunity. A drawbridge would have massively increased the defensiveness of the castle, forcing attackers to either swim across the moat or build a ramp. Now let's look at the gate. What gate? Now this is the biggest fail in the entire castle's design. It does so well in other aspects, but not having a gate is a serious and inexcusable flaw. Everything else around the entrance was so beautifully designed. Look at how narrow it is, forcing attackers to bunch together. Look at how they have to pass through a little tunnel, allowing defenders to drop rocks and hot sand and other nasty things down through murder holes. There are arrow slits in the front to let archers and majors shoot at people on the bridge. I would have loved to see more arrow slits in the tunnel too though. Um, speaking of arrow slits, there's something Jagex did extremely well. So obviously these arrow slits are in the shape of the Star of Saradomen, whom the White Knights all worship. However, they also serve a more practical purpose. They resemble cross arrow slits in real life, which can be used not just by longbows, but also crossbows. These holes cover the outer wall of the castle comprehensively. It's beautiful to see. Now that we're talking about the walls, they're fantastic walls. They are tall, very tall, with not much chance of someone climbing them, unlike in Lumbridge Castle, which is shaped like a wedding cake. There are three cylindrical towers on each side of the castle which allows defenders to fire down on attackers right against the castle walls, very unlikely since there's a moat, but useful. The fact that they're round means that the archers and mages have a greater field of vision, so that's perfect. I would have loved for the top portions of the towers, 
not to shrink though. Perhaps it was someone's idea that if the towers got smaller at the top, there would be more room for defenders to stand around it and volley arrows and spells. In truth, all this does is reduce the visibility of the people at the top who now can't see the bottom of the castle walls. And that's where the attackers will be bunched up. So it's the most important place to see. In addition to the three round towers is this square bastion at the entrance, resembling a gatehouse except there's no gate. Again, it has the same problem with the towers on top being smaller. This is very common in many fantasy castles from games and movies, because having different layers to a castle wall makes it look cooler. But in truth, it's the tall, flat, imposing walls that work best, even if they look a little ordinary. The last thing to say about the walls is that, again, as with the city wall, the crenellations are just a little too short to be effective. It's time now to look at the structure of the castle itself. The White Knight's castle takes a fairly common form. It's a quadrangular castle, which means that the main rooms and buildings, like the Great Hall or the kitchen, form part of the outer wall, and there is a quadrangle or courtyard in the centre. Approximately 10% of the castles built in England in the Middle Ages were of this kind. In fact, the White Knight's castle quite resembles Bolton Castle in Yorkshire. The fact that Jagex chose to make this a quadrangular castle is actually an inspired decision. Quadrangular castles historically served both defensive and offensive purposes, often acting as an administrative center. This is clearly the function it serves for the White Knights, so great job there Jagex. It's a pretty good defensive structure because many enemies that make it inside the castle are now going to be surrounded by defenders on all sides and will be sitting ducks in there. As you can see, there are plenty of ramparts and even internal arrow slits for the knights to rain hell down on that courtyard. It's a shame that there's just this little undercover area that negates that devastating power somewhat. A few other things that I'll just touch on. The larders are way too small. The most common way for a castle to be sieged is for it to be starved out. The white knights really do need to dedicate an entire room to food storage so that they can withstand a lengthy siege until help arrives. Also, I see cannons on the top floor. Cannons really don't do well firing directly down onto enemies. Best they be kept on the ground floor where they can fire forwards at attackers. Also, since you are waging war against the Black Knights, you'd want to be able to roll these cannons out of the castle to bombard their fortress. Good luck getting them downstairs. Next, 12 beds isn't really enough for this castle. Beds shouldn't be a luxury, so please up that number to support all your knights. If they are unrested, they can't defend properly. Finally, in the real world, you don't usually find crypts in castles, but it's nice to have one to be honest. Falador's vulnerable citizens could hide here, or you could store supplies down here um, if you had enough notice. Just make sure the enemy doesn't get in because they really could screw up the castle's foundations. In summary, it's not a bad design to be honest. It's got a few really good elements such as the moat, the quadrangle and the arrow slits, but it's severely let down by the lack of gate, bad tower design and hole in the city wall. For me, I'd give this castle three stars. It has a lot of potential and it's way better than the other two castles I've reviewed, but a few simple changes would make it a lot better. This does leave some room for a future castle to beat it out and be named RuneScape's most defensible castle, but I'm honestly not sure if that's the case. Well, that's all for now. Next time we look at Camelot, a very special castle indeed, because it's not visited as often as the three I've already critiqued. Might this be the castle we've been waiting for? Until next time, my friends, happy scaping. <laughs>